Okay, hey everybody. So a friend of mine is working at a place that is dealing with this stuff and he invited me over to show me something really cool. Um, I like to showcase this on my channel just because this is stuff you are typically maybe not exposed to but this is kind of what our internet and networks are running upon and so I think it's really cool to just showcase this. So this stuff here is uh, simple fiber and you can imagine this just to be like your copper at home for your ethernet just in this case it's light. So in this video we talk about optical fibers but more specifically it's about fiber tapping. So here's a document on the Homeland Security Digital Library. It's called Technical Information Bulletin All Optical Networks. It's actually from 2002 and here they say that all optical fibers will grow rapidly in popularity over the next several years due to their high speed and ability to overcome the electronic bottleneck. So this document is over 19 years old before fiber got apparently really really popular and nowadays all data centers and all long range connections are basically fiber. And so here in this document is something very interesting. In the table of contents you can actually find a security chapter and here physical security and more specifically tapping attacks. Tapping can be used to gain unauthorized access to information that may be used for eavesdropping or traffic analysis. Tapping attacks are possible at several points within the network due to the component crosstalk. For example, contemporary demultiplexers within network nodes separate each individual signal or wavelength received from a single fiber onto separate physical paths. These demultiplexers may exhibit crosstalk levels between 0.03% and 1%. These crosstalk levels allow a little of each each signal to leak onto the wrong path. Yet these signals may have enough fidelity to permit an attacker to detect their presence and recover a portion of data. So I find this very fascinating to now read a document that is so old where they already were aware of the physical properties of fiber and were thinking what is the impact on security there. We have also had a lot of NSA leaks regarding the tapping of for example undersea cables. And thanks to my friend I'm able to demonstrate to you how tapping an optical fiber can look like. So you can here see the start, this laser here is giving like a blinking signal into the fiber. And this fiber goes around here, goes into this black box here and if you look very carefully you might be able to see kind of like individual fibers uh, going around here in a circle. It will then eventually go into this big blue loop. Now this big blue cable is actually what you would find underground. It, it contains 144 single fibers and you would use this to you know, connect places uh, on, underground. So this is what you would actually find your network to be connected in real life between you know, physical locations far away. So this is how the cable would come from underground and sometimes you might find uh, these kind of boxes. And inside those boxes you can see how the blue wire with all the individual wires and then the fibers is coming in and then we see these plastic pieces here these are so-called splice trays. And so when we look here, you can actually see individual fibers coming out and they are being fused together at this point here at the bottom. This is what you are doing when you want to extend a fiber because they are manufactured in a certain length and when you want to extend them, you need to uh, fuse them together. It's called splicing and they are then laying in these splice trays contained in these boxes. And this is obviously cut open here in reality it will obviously be enclosed to be you know protected from the elements when it's put on the ground or when it's just placed outside somewhere. So we have a single one right now that's going in here and it's going through the loop and then the single fiber is exiting here. You can see here one of the cables coming in the fiber going through a loop and going out on the other side. So you can see here multiple cables coming out of it each cable with isolation contains another 12 fibers but uh, out of this uh, blue one here you can see that a single fiber is coming out it's just going into in a loop it goes back into this loop here and goes out on the on the other blue cable it goes through the loop and eventually it's coming out below here again the single fiber and exits here so you can see the blinking signal and if you come closer because I'm bending it, the refraction of the light are uh, exiting out of the fiber itself, so you can very clearly uh, see it in this case. 
So here you can nicely see the, the blinking signal of the laser that is um, shooting this red light through the fiber. Actually, the spending that's causing a fraction of the light to exit here that we are able to see is a property that we will abuse in just a moment. Here's it in the dark again. You can really see now with the eyes uh, how the fiber is blinking. The real fiber, the real signal is actually being sent in infrared. So fiber underground wouldn't be blinking red like this. This is just to visualize which fibers are connected and where the light is traveling. So now we are changing the setup. We're actually connecting the input that we used the laser for for a moment and connect it to one of the devices over here. We just did a, a visual approach. The laser is shining a red light, but actually real fiber is operating an infrared light, so we actually can't see uh, that signal visually. The input cable over here is now connected to this little device. And this is nothing else than just a fancy version of the laser. It's a device for testing, so you can actually see the terahertz that it's uh, sending as a signal right now. And it sends with a power of 7.7 .7 dBm. And we also connected now the output again through a cable over here going into this device. And because we can't see the infrared light, this device helps us to actually uh, see what is being received. And if you look closely here, uh, just above 192 terahertz, you can see a signal being received. And down here, you can also see that the signal strength is still 5.4 dBm. So we had a small drop from the 7.7 .7 to 5.3, 5.4 dBm. And so now that we have the setup, we come to a very special device. It's this little thing here. So typically, this little thing costs you around regularly maybe $2,000, but uh, my friend found it on eBay from somewhere in Russia for like 300 bucks. So what does it do? So we can take the one fiber from earlier and place it into this device here. You can see the round metal part in the middle where we are bending the cable around. And now when we close it, we are actually bending the fiber as we did earlier with our finger. To visualize the tapping, we have again connected the laser to the input of the fiber. And so let's have a look at the tapping. So you can see here that you can actually visually see now the light blinking. The bending of the wire inside of this device causes a fraction of the light to leave it and then enter the fiber below that we can then uh, tap and record the traffic on there. So if you follow that fiber that's coming out there, you can see here uh, the light coming out of that fiber. So now that we have bent the cable and a fraction of the light is being lost because it's exiting the fiber, we can actually observe now on the receiving side that we dropped a little bit in strength. Now we have only 2.1 dBm left. We have observed now that the strength of the signal changed when we did the bending of the wire and we tapped it. And now let's see what the output of this device is. So you can see that this device has a single fiber coming out of it. And so let's look at the signal of this fiber. The, the fiber coming from this little device is now going into our measurement unit and we can still see that we will detect the 192 terahertz signal. But you can also see that the signal is very weak. We are now at minus 34 dBm. But the important part is that we were able to tap the fiber without breaking it up, without cutting it and splicing it together again. We are just tapping it using physics, bending it slightly, and a fraction of the light is exiting the real fiber and is going in our kind of like tapped fiber to basically read the signal uh, of the real fiber. There's a theoretical attack that somebody could dig down to one of those blue cables somewhere on the field where this is being laid, and then they can just remove the isolation of it, expose a single fiber, and then attach a tap like this to record all the traffic that is going through. So these kind of boxes are obviously also good places where you might be able to tap uh, a wire. So this kind of tapping you can't detect easily because you are not cutting the wire. So it's not a disrupt disruption of the service. So the provider that would be laying a cable like this would not notice that for a couple of minutes the, the cable suddenly like is, is cut, is, is dead. But 
there's still something else we can observe. So right now the fiber is laid into the device, but we haven't closed it yet. So we haven't really tapped the signal yet. And we can see that the real signal is at 4.5 dBm. And now if we close it, so we are actually now bending the wire, that has an impact because now a fraction of the light is lost to the strength. So now we drop down to 1.2, 1.1 dBm. So the theory here is that an operator could detect if their fiber is being tapped if they are observing the signal strength of their fibers. And a certain significant sudden drop without a reason might be an indication that a fiber has been tapped like this.